Hey Stargazers, welcome back. My name is Nick, I'm a theaters manager at the Adler Planetarium, and you're watching Skywatch Weekly. Most of the time on this show, I talk about objects that are visible for fairly long periods, like a planet or a constellation that'll be visible for weeks or months at a time. This week, though, I want to pick up the pace a little bit and talk about an object that is very bright, very easily seen from pretty much any sky, but if you aren't looking in just the right place at just the right time, you'll miss it. I'm talking about the International Space Station. Well, the night sky is often filled with moving lights, and sometimes, especially in a big city, it's often an airplane, like when my imaging sessions get photobombed by a 737. But sometimes the moving lights aren't blinking. They're steady as they appear to move among the stars. In that case, what you're looking at is probably an artificial satellite. There are currently over 2,600 active satellites in orbit and many more inactive ones. On any given evening, you can spot many, but none is so eye-catching as the International Space Station. The space station orbits the Earth once every 90 minutes, so it passes overhead several times a day. Often, this is in the daytime, or when the space station is fully in Earth's shadow. But occasionally, it passes over in a dark enough sky while still illuminated by the sun that it blazes brighter than Venus in the sky. The space station's solar panels cover roughly the area of an American football field, so this huge object reflects a lot of light. This week, we have two particularly good passes of the space station visible in Chicago. Now, if you aren't from Chicago, you can find out when it will be visible from your location at the website we'll be using, heavens-above.com. Heavens Above also has a great app for Android users, and there are plenty of other web and mobile options for finding the space station. The ISS is visible as it goes overhead from such a large geographic area that if it passes overhead in Chicago, observers from anywhere in the Great Lakes region should have a good view. What will change is the timing, direction, and height of the pass from different areas. So I'll be walking you through Saturday's pass in Chicago, but if you're from somewhere else or want to see a different pass on a different day, make sure you get the map for your particular location and time. Even if you are in Chicago, I would recommend checking the website closer to the time of the expected pass. As I've been preparing this episode, the predictions have shifted by a couple minutes. So you wanna make sure you have the most up-to-date prediction before you go out and look. So on Heavens Above, definitely make sure you enter your location, and then under the 10-day predictions for satellites, click on ISS. This brings up the visible passes over the next 10 days from your location. Let's walk through this chart. The first column is date, so you can see when it will be visible. During certain times, there won't be any visible passes, or like right now, there will be one almost every evening. Now look at the start column and the time. This time is when the space station is 10 degrees above your horizon. I generally catch sight of it maybe a minute later, once it's cleared the trees and buildings and gotten a bit brighter. Make sure you pay attention to if it's a morning or evening pass. I speak from personal experience that it isn't fun to realize the pass you thought was at 5.30 p.m. was actually 12 hours ago at 5.30 a.m. Also notice the direction which is under a column labeled AZ for azimuth. This is the direction to look for the space station. So if a building or a large tree blocks your view, maybe move to a better spot so you can see it more easily. Okay, now the highest point column. The ALT is the altitude over the horizon in degrees at the highest point in the sky the station will reach. So 90 degrees would be directly overhead. And then the azimuth shows the direction. So this tells you in which part of the sky the pass will reach its highest point. You'll notice some of these are very low passes that don't even reach a quarter of the way up in the sky. Now you can certainly go for them, but be warned, they won't be as impressive or long lasting as the higher passes, but they can be a fun challenge. On this website, if you click on the date of the pass, you get a star chart showing the pass. This is a chart of the entire sky, so the center of the circle is overhead at the time of the pass. You can see the cardinal points indicated around the edge, and north is at the top. This line shows the path of the space station, with a handy arrow indicating the direction of travel. Notice the time markings. 
So on Saturday in Chicago, the space station will rise in the west-southwest at 6.03 p.m., climb higher over the next couple of minutes, and by about 6.06 .06, should be easily seen to the right of Jupiter and Saturn at about the same height above the horizon. Here's how this view looks in the planetarium software. Here's Jupiter and Saturn, and here's the space station climbing higher. From there, the pace really picks up. Just after 6.07, the space station will move through the Summer Triangle. And just before 6.09, something interesting happens. You'll see the space station get dimmer, noticeably redder, and then fade away. It's entering Earth's shadow at that time. So from the point of view of the astronauts on the space station, the sun is setting. But because the space station orbits so quickly, they'll see it rise again in about 45 minutes. As big as it is, the space station will only appear as a point of light to the naked eye. Keep in mind, it's still over 200 miles away when it's straight overhead. If you're looking for more than just a naked eye view, there are a few options, but these do require some extra equipment and a good bit of practice. With a camera and a nice telescope, you can use some ingenuity and capture pictures of the space station. I took this picture through my backyard scope with a stock DSLR camera just last month. You can see detail in the space station structure in addition to the solar panels. Another interesting challenge for photography is capturing the space station passing in front of the moon or sun. This requires a good bit of planning and being in a very specific location at a very specific time. Solar transits of the space station require a safe solar filter. You should never look at the sun with or without a telescope without proper protection from a reliable source. One such source is Thousand Oaks Optical. I have no affiliation with them and they aren't a sponsor, but I can't emphasize enough the importance of proper solar filters. We'll put a link to them in the description. Here's an image I got of the space station transiting the sun last month. The entire transit occurs in less than one second. So a high frame rate video with short frame exposures is the way to go. Transits of the moon are easier and safer to see. In fact, with a small backyard telescope or binoculars, you can see the space station scoot across the lunar face quite easily. My preferred space station transit website is transit-finder.com. You can plug in your location and it'll show you upcoming transits that you can attempt to see. So I challenge you this week to get out and see the International Space Station. I think you'll be surprised just how easy it is to spot. This month marks 20 years of continuous human presence in space, and that's thanks to the International Space Station. So as you watch it, think about the fact that you're seeing an orbiting laboratory moving at five miles per second, and there are humans living and working on board that vehicle streaking across your sky. Well, that's what we have for you this week. Thanks, as always, for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and be notified of all the great content coming from the Adler Planetarium. Also, follow us on social media. Happy station spotting, and we'll see you next week.